The trio breaks into a house and rifles through the drawers of an unsuspecting fish to steal underwear. Now, if that wasn't unsettling and an arrestable offense in and of itself, it turns out that it's the home of Mr. Krabs' mom. Hey guys, welcome back to The Binger. SpongeBob SquarePants is one heck of a cartoon that focuses on the bizarre. It's not unusual to catch these guys on the wrong side of the law, although their main crime is arguably stupidity. Let's check out some of the times that the residents of Bikini Bottom laughed in the face of authority. Given what a miserable character Squidward is, it's perfect that he calls his mom Mumsy. Like many people who put on a harsh exterior, Squidward, he's just a big mama's boy. And Miss Tentacles looks exactly like what you'd expect, which is just like her son. There's an uncanny family resemblance that can't be denied. Although she's your stereotypical old lady, she isn't safe from crime. In the episode Krusty Towers, Squidward gets a hankering for the cookies his mom used to make. Being the good friends that they are, SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs band together to visit Mrs. Tentacles. When they arrive at her house, they're dressed like robbers. In a flash, they grab her and bundle her into the car. All isn't quite as it seems, though. The old dear helps pack Mr. Krabs' laundry. When mom makes the cookies for her son, Squidward isn't even all that happy. He wistfully sighs, If only mom was a better cook. All that for a big old serving of disappointment. Let's hope Mrs. Tentacles is cooing her heels far away from the bandits of Bikini Bottom for now. Ah, Patrick Starr. He's the most lovable dope to ever grace our screens, isn't he? Say what you want about this dude, but you have to admit, he's got a lot of heart. All Patrick really wants is to be happy, so when he enters the Fry Cook games, he bites off a little bit more than he can chew. SpongeBob is already taking part, so the competition is fierce. During one particular event, the BFFs have to pole vault over a deep fryer. SpongeBob gets some serious air and clears it with ease, showing Patrick how the pros do it. And Patrick gave it the good old college try, but he isn't anywhere nearly as graceful as his friend. Instead, he manages to flip the boiling hot oil towards the audience, and he ends up spraying some unsuspecting fish with it. They immediately turn into fish sticks, which is one of the best SpongeBob gags ever. To fans, it's just another hilarious part of the show. However, if we put our lawmaker hats on, this is serious public endangerment. If this happened at a large-scale event in the non-cartoon, non-aquatic world, there would be lawsuits popping out left, right, and center. Patrick and SpongeBob continue to go about the games, though, without much thought to their fallen friends. They had bigger fish to fry. <laughs> Sorry. We couldn't leave that one hanging there. As much as we'd all like to run around with no clothes on from time to time, we just can't do it. Why? Because it's just plain weird and goes against all the social codes that we've built over hundreds and hundreds of years. Of course, when it comes to cartoon characters, it's only natural that they put them in clothes too. The people of Bikini Bottom are no stranger to a tie or two, especially Mr. Krabs. Ever the proud business owner, he always looks suited and booted. At least in his own reality, anyway. In Season 3's The Algae is Always Greener, Plankton decides to use a machine to flip the script. It works, putting him in Mr. Krabs' life and Mr. Krabs in his. It doesn't take long for Mr. Krabs to walk up trying to steal the formula. The only thing is, he's completely naked. That's a whole lot of crab to be out there in the open. SpongeBob, a loyal employee to this alternate version of Plankton, tries to fend off Mr. Krabs by firing clothes at him. Funny enough, the only thing that seems to stick is an unwired bra. When things revert back to normal, Plankton sees that his life isn't really all that bad after all. Driving stupidly is... Well, it's just a stupid thing to do. We all know that taking silly risks behind a wheel can lead to some really bad stuff. However, we're all living and breathing humans with a sense of moral decency. Most of us, anyway. SpongeBob, on the other hand, lives life to the extreme. Safety has never been his middle name. He's all about that rash decision making. His boating exam teacher, Mrs. Puff, knows that all too well, but she gives him a license anyway. She regrets it later. Worried about the harm that SpongeBob might cause, Mrs. Puff steals SpongeBob's new boat while he's in it. 
So, two illegal things are going on here already in this episode. First, giving someone a license when they didn't earn it, and secondly, Grand Theft Auto. SpongeBob takes the cake though when he gets hold of the wheel and drives it straight into a police car. It really can't get any worse than this. In true SpongeBob fashion, the bizarre incident brings the two nut jobs closer together. Mrs. Puff isn't let off the hook quite so easily by the authorities though. Okay, sure, this is a dream and all, but that doesn't really matter. We're still taking this Season 2 episode, Survival of the Idiots, seriously. Or at least as seriously as you can take Spongebob. Sandy's busy trying to hibernate when Patrick and Spongebob decide to visit her. They hang out in Sandy's pad while the squirrel dreams away. She's not happily snoozing away though, thinking about nuts or something. But instead she's dreaming about two outlaws. Dastardly Dan and Pinhead Larry are their names and tax evasion is their game. It's heavily implied that the two are keeping money from Uncle Sam. Sandy mumbles something out loud, so Patrick and Spongebob pretend to be the two criminals. Later on, they rip off her fur. I mean, they had no choice though. They were cold. So, to say that this is a weird episode is an understatement. Now sure, it's only a dream, but cartoons don't exactly follow the pattern of reality anyway. It is still a noteworthy entry for this video though. Many fans have long since speculated that Mr. Krabs is doing a little dirty dealing for the Krusty Krab too, so watch this space. If these two were bigger idiots, they'd blot out the sun. Patrick and Spongebob are possibly the only two characters in existence that would manage to turn stealing a free balloon into a felony. In the episode Life of Crime, the two buddies catch Mr. Krabs watching a crime caper on TV. Now, Mr. Krabs does tell them that stealing is bad, but they remind him that he has a ton of stuff that isn't his. The business owner tells them that all this stuff is simply borrowed, and that was his first mistake. Later on, Patrick and Spongebob want a balloon, but don't have a dime between them. Instead, they decide to follow Mr. Krabs' advice and borrow a balloon from a stand. They run away in a panic before Luke can tell them that it's National Free Balloon Day. And to be honest, Patrick and Spongebob don't make the best Thelma and Louise. They go on the lam, terrified that they've ruined their lives forever. They may not have committed a crime, but they very nearly did. The intentions were there. The jaded sponge and guilty starfish end up confessing their wrongdoings to the police. There's a collective eye roll from the authorities who send them on their way with a lollipop. Having learned their lesson, Patrick and Spongebob vow to never borrow anything ever again. Was it against the law? No, but they didn't know that. If you live in a city or a town or even a little village, the chances are that you've seen some sort of vandalism at some point. It's kind of just a part of life, you know? Walk past the subway, you'll see a poster, some scrawl graffiti or something like that. Take a stroll through a park and you'll see a tree adorned with initials. It happens in Bikini Bottom too, although it's less than complimentary. In the episode The Krusty Slammer, Plankton decides to get back at his arch enemy Mr. Krabs by putting up pictures of him. He desperately wants the rest of the world to think that the red businessman is a jerk, but it doesn't work. Instead, he's arrested. When they walk up to the jail, it's full. Much to Mr. Krabs' dismay, the police officer sets Plankton free. As a remedy to the situation, Mr. Krabs turns the Krusty Krab into a second jail for Bikini Bottom as a lucrative business prospect. As you might expect, nothing that glitters is ever gold in this cartoon and things soon go belly up. In an unexpected turn of events, Mr. Krabs releases the prisoners early and is arrested himself. Although he thinks he'll just be put into his jail and thus be free to do whatever he wants, the officer has other plans for him. Mr. Krabs ends up in a secluded jail at the Chum Bucket where an overjoyed Plankton takes his revenge on him all the live long day. For all of Mr. Krabs' faults, he's just a little bit of a middle-aged goof. Not that we're saying all middle-aged people are goofs, but this cartoon crustacean certainly is. In one episode, Mr. Krabs has a tough day and starts to feel like his life is already over. A group of kids calls him old and he doesn't take it well, even though he kind of is as far as Bikini Bottom residents go. When a customer calls a burger old and dried out like that man over there and points to Mr. Krabs, it's the last straw. Poor Mr. Krabs couldn't be more down if he tried. However, he turns to the wrong place for comfort. Patrick and Spongebob decide to turn his frown upside down by taking him out on the town. While these guys might be well-meaning, they're not exactly known for their wild private lives. 
After picking up trash on the highway for a while, followed by a stint at a kids club, Mr. Krabs is about to blow. No crazy parties, no sea anemones dancing for dollars, it's a bust. That is, until they go on a panty raid. Oh yes, a panty raid. The trio breaks into a house and rifles through the drawers of an unsuspecting fish to steal underwear. Now, if that wasn't unsettling and an arrestable offense in and of itself, it turns out that it's the home of Mr. Krabs' mom. That makes it incredibly awkward, considering her son had just been ogling her bloomers. Ew. Some of the best episodes of the show focus on Squidward. In New Fish in Town, Patrick rents out his front yard to earn some extra cash. Depending upon whether or not Patrick is subletting or not, that could be a whole other kettle of fish. A lot of landlords don't like that sort of thing. But anyway, we're here to talk about Squidward's antics and not Patrick's. When a fish called Howard turns up in a mobile home, he hits it off with Mr. Tentacles. By this point, Howard hasn't met Patrick or Spongebob yet, and Squidward becomes scared that his new BFF is going to leave once he does. He tries to hide him from them, making a fence, then a stone wall. Things go from bad to worse when Squidward ends up using a bulldozer to push Patrick and Spongebob's houses off a cliff. In the end, he also turns his sights on Howard, who he begins to find irritating. Howard's mobile home goes off the cliff too, and right into the abyss. Sounds like something straight out of Judge Judy, doesn't it? SpongeBob's list of boat-related crimes is about as long as your arm. In Season 3's Doing Time, things go awry when he takes his driver's exam for the millionth time. He wrecks the boating school and several things across the city before driving off an unfinished bridge. The police are in hot pursuit, but they end up wrecking into a truck full of punch on its way to the retirement home. In a sequence that is more Final Destination than SpongeBob SquarePants, the fruit punch floods the rest home. Poor Mrs. Puff. As the instructor in question, she gets sent to the slammer for gross negligence. That fish just can't escape SpongeBob, no matter how hard she tries. Things quickly escalate when Patrick and SpongeBob try to rob the first nautical bank to get themselves arrested. On the plus side, Mrs. Puff likes it in jail because she knows she'll never have to see that little yellow sponge again. Can you remember a time that these guys got chucked in the slammer? Sound off in the comments section down below. Before you go, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You'll make our day. Oh, and be sure to give this video a nice big thumbs up too. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the flip side.